Okay, so this is a video just to go through how to do simplex algorithm using the FX CG50 graphics calculator from Casio. So I'm going to be working through this question here, very basic simplex tableau, to kind of just give an overview of how it works. So first things first, let's write out the constraints and the work as we need it for the table. So we've got maximize p minus 8x minus 9y minus 5z equals 0. That's our objective function. Subject to 2x plus 3y plus 4z Plus, now I'm going to use S and T just because I feel like it for my slack variables. You can use whatever you like as long as the letters aren't already being used. Okay, then we get 6y plus, sorry, 6x plus 6y plus 2z plus T equals 8. So we now need to set up our initial simplex tableau. So we can do the algorithm. Okay, so we've got that the initial tableau. Okay, so we've got our basic variable. We have our variables x, y, z, s, t and then we have value. Okay, so putting in our equations, remember the objective function goes on the bottom, so I'll deal with that last. Okay, so we've got, I'm just going to do that, hopefully that's going to sort the weird focusing. Okay, so we've got that 2x plus 3y plus 4z, 1s, no t's, and the value is 3. In this case, the basic variable is s. Then we have 6x plus 6y plus 2z, no s's, 1t, and the value is 8. The basic variable is t. Lastly, our basic variable is p. We have minus 8x minus 9y minus 5z, no s's, no t's, and no value. Okay, so as normal, first thing we need to do is write down or work out what the pivot is. So pivot, remember, we use the column with the least or with the most negative number, so in this case, minus 9. So the pivot is in the y column. Okay, now we need to work out our theta values. Luckily, we've only got two of the things. So theta 1 for row 1 is going to be 3 over 3, which is 1. And our theta 2 is 8 over 6, which is more than 1. This is the smallest non-negative so pivot is in row 1. Okay, so let's circle the pivot to give us there. So this is where the graphics calculator come, can come in really handy. So first things first, let's turn it on. Okay, so on. So on the run matrix page, or on the run matrix screen, so remember menu and then it's 1. and get there we go okay so we need to input a matrix so we go to matrix and we'll select matrix a okay so the dimension remember is rows so we have three rows and we've got one two three four five six columns so we're going to put in a three by six 
So three, execute, six, execute, and then enter. And you can see we get a big old matrix here. If we now input our matrix, so we've got two, three, whoops, three, four, one, zero, three, six, six, two, zero, one, eight, and then minus eight, minus nine, minus five, zero, zero, zero. Okay, this is now set up for us to be able to do the math that we need. Apologies for the glare from the light. I don't know where that light is from. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to write down our tableau or set up our tableau for the first iteration. We'll come back to the graphics calculator in a minute. So we've got our first iteration. Okay, so we've still got our basic variable, we've still got our x, y, z, s, t, value. And now we need our row operations column as well. Okay, so remember, we need to make the pivot equal to 1 using multiplication. So our row operation is going to be 1 third R1. Now the reason I put it in like that is because it's how we type it in the calculator. So let's go back to our graphics calculator, which hopefully, if it's sensible, has given itself a little bit of a break. And you can see along the bottom, we've got this option for row op. So we press F1, and then we have a bunch of options here. Now, swapping is when you want to swap two rows over. Times row is when you want to multiply a row by a number. Times row plus is when you want to times a row by a number and then add it to a different row. And then row plus is just when you want to add two rows together. We're timesing a row by a third, so we just want times row. K is the number we're multiplying by, so we do one third. Don't put 0 0.3, type it in as one third or use the fraction button, and then it deals with it for you. M is the row we are on. This is consistent for the graphics calculator. M is always the row you are wanting to change, I believe. Might change that in a minute. Okay, but for now, we're doing row one. No, row uh, M is the row we are using. Okay, so either press execute here or just the normal execute button, and it changes it for you. Now you can see we got horrible decimals. If we press the change to fraction button, we can change it to two over three. This has done all the calculations for us. We just copy down the row. So we've got two thirds one, which remember we wanted that change that to a fraction, so four over three one third zero and our value is one remember we now need to change the basic variable S is now non-basic, we swapped it to Y. We now need to change the other rows. So we need to make this number here equal to zero. So we're going to do minus six lots of R1 plus R2. So now we, we are multiplying a row by a number, then adding it. So we choose plus or times row plus F3. So K is the number we're multiplying the pivot row by. So M is the pivot row. N is the row we are changing. So we've got minus six row one plus row two. And it changes it for you. Now, if you happen to accidentally type it in wrong, that's fine. 
what you can do is you can just go back and retype in the row. Or you can undo your calculation if you can think if you can figure it out. But it's sometimes easier just to go back to here and go, okay, I'm just gonna retype that row and do it again. Okay, but we're good for now. The basic variable stays as t, and now we can see we've got here. Come on, focus. There we go. Two, zero, and so on. So we can just fill in and write down what that is. Okay, so we've got two. 0, minus 6, minus 2, 1, and 2. Last one, we need to make this equal to 0. So we do 9 lots of R1 plus R3. So 9 R1 plus R3. Okay, so again, we're using the times row option, so times row plus, 9 row 1 plus row 3. And provided you type it all in right, you should get basic variable still p, minus 2, 0, 7, 3, 0, 9. And that's the first iteration done. You can see it's significantly quicker using the graphics calculator than trying to manually work out each thing individually. So we now can then continue with the algorithm. Here, this is our, going to be our pivot row. So we go pivot in X column. If you want to have a go before I go through it, then obviously pause now, have a go, and then you can check and see if we've got the same, okay? So the pivot is in the X column. So you've got two theta values. Theta one is the value divided by two thirds, giving three over two. And theta two it's going to be 2 over 2, which is 1. This is the pivot, or this tells us the pivot clearly. So this is the smallest, oops, non negative. So pivot in R2. And we're going to circle it. Now, if you've spaced it correctly, or if you've spaced it enough, you might be able to get away with getting this second iteration on the same piece of paper. If you haven't, just start a new piece. Don't try and do half of a table on one. I would say this is enough. Start on the new table from this page. Okay, so I think I've got enough. So I'm going to just stay on the same page. So second iteration. Okay, we've got our basic variable, x, y, z, s, t, value, and our row operations. Okay, so continuing like we did before, we know that we need to make the pivot There we go. The pivot equal to 1. So we're going to do row 2 divided by 2, or a half row 2. Whoops, that's... No, that's fine. Okay, so like before, we know that t is going to change to x, because that's the pivot row that, column that we circled. We go back to the graphics calculator. Wait for my video to focus. Come on. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do times row. We're doing a half. So you can put it in as a half or 0 0.5. It's up to you. Row M. So M is row 2. And we get it there. Okay, very easy to check. 
that should be a 1. Then we just, it's a case of copying it down again. Okay, so we get 1, 0, minus 3, minus 1, a half. Now, I personally prefer to put them in as fractions. Otherwise, it's entirely up to you. Um, I just find it's a good habit to get into, just in case you start dividing by weird numbers like 7s and 3s and 6s and stuff that generally makes writing decimals a pain. Okay, so we're now going to make this one equal to 0, which is why the graphics calculators are super useful, because we've got 2 thirds. Okay, so we need to think, well, what do we multiply 2 thirds, or what do we need to add to 1, or to 2 thirds to get 0? And that's minus 2 thirds, so we do minus 2 thirds row 2 plus row 1. Okay, so we go back to the calculator, times row, we've got minus 2 thirds, whoops, missed the 2, minus 2 thirds, row 2, to row 1, and there we go. Whoops, I've done something wrong. That's gone real funny. So, here's an example of what you can do if things go wrong. So, see, I've clearly gone something wrong because this should be a 0. It shouldn't be minus 1 times 10 to the minus 15. I don't know why it's that. I'll figure that one out in a minute. But what we can do is if we just retype in the old thing, it should revert back to what we want. Okay, so that was where we were before. We've just retyped it and we can try again. So minus two thirds row two to row one. There we go. I don't know what happened there. It might be because I was using decimals before and I've just started using fractions. It might be that, so try not to mix them. Okay, so we got 0, 1, 10 over 3. So if you use fractions all the way through for your row operations and things, you can see when you ho hover over a element, it automatically gives it to you as a fraction. You don't have to change it. So that might be what caused the issue here. Obviously, minus 1 times 10 to the minus 15, very, very small, basically 0. So we keep going. We've got a 1 here, minus a third, and a third. Okay, last one. Well, we need to change that to y. Basic variable here stays as p. So last one, we need to add two lots of row 2 to row 3. So we've got 2, row 2, plus row 3, and we're away. Okay, so we've got times row 2, row 2, to row 3. As you get more familiar with using the graphics calculator, this becomes significantly quick, which is unfortunately why Simplex is now worth many fewer marks than it used to. Because obviously you can just whack it in your calculator and get an answer. Okay, so we can now see there are no negatives in our objective row, which means we have found the optimal solution. So we need to write that. Okay, so we got no negatives. in objective row, so optimal. Remember simplex specifically maximizes, so our maximum value of p is 11, or 11 units of whatever it is. We've got x is equal to 1, y is equal to a third, and then our non-basic variables, z, s, and t, are all zero. And there we go. That's a simplex example using the graphics calculator. Hopefully that was useful. Okay.